Welcome, my name is Maarten and I am the author of open source packages such as Pertopic for topic modeling and Keyword for keyword extraction. In this video, I'm proud to introduce an extension to Keyword called KeyLLM. It enables the use of large language models for keyword extraction. We can use any LLM, but in this video, we will focus on the newly released open source Mistral 7B. It's small, but it's incredibly accurate and it shows how far LLMs have come. So let's get this intro out of the way and just get started. As always, we start with the Google Colab notebook. You can find the link in the description for you to follow along. We will start by installing a number of packages that we are going to use for key LLM. For upgrading sentence transformers using its main branch to have some fixes that are necessary. We do the same with transformers. Because of Mistral 7B, we need their latest version, which is only available at this moment in their newest branch. And we install C transformers, which is a nice way for us to install quantized models that are much easier to run. How are we going to load this Mistral 7B? Well, Mistral 7B is a small and amazing model, but we can make it a bit smaller. As we have seen in previous tutorials, we can do quantization. And quantization essentially compresses the parameters of a model to make sure that less RAM and less VRAM is necessary to load in the model. So what we have done in the last two videos is we loaded the original model and then we quantized them. This can be an expensive process. It's nice for tutorial purposes, but what if we want an already quantized model? This is where the blow comes in. It's a user on the hugging face that has quantized hundreds of models for us to use. So instead of having to quantize each model ourselves, we can just load a pre-quantized model already in. And we're doing that using C transformers. C transformers allows us to do these to load in these compressed versions of these models. Loading in the 7B instruct model, and instruct is a chat-based model, and we offload some of its layers. And offloading means that we're choosing a number of layers in the original model to be used on the GPU. The more layers we put on the GPU, the more VRAM it will use. So if you run into memory problems, lowering that value might help. So we simply load in this model, which I've already done previously, so it goes, goes quite fast uh, for us to be using. Then we do a few tricks to make sure it's able to load in a hugging face pipeline. And those pipelines are incredibly helpful for us to easily use these kind of models. The tokenizer we can just use from the original model. That's fine because we're not quantizing the tokenizer. And then we throw everything into a hugging face pipeline. We tell it to only generate 50 new tokens at a max. And for keyword extraction, that makes perfect sense, right? If we just want a number of keywords and we don't want a chat based model that starts to repeat itself or anything else, having a limited number of tokens that it can output actually helps us in making sure it's constrained. And what we can do is we can just run this code. It should go relatively fast. And after that, we can look into some prompt engineering. So it loads in the tokenizer, which uh, compared to the original model is quite small. And then we have our generator. So let's take a look. Let's explore how Mistral B works. We'll start with some basic prompt engineering. We can ask the model, what is one plus one? And it gives us an answer. The response consists of the original question, what is one plus one? And it gives us an answer. And the way it does that kind of depends on the model. So it's not that every single LLM out there would do A uh, as an answer and then give the answer. That's specific to Mistral 7B. But we're doing this for keyword extraction, right? So let's go into a keyword extraction example. I have a prompt here that says I have the following document. And from that document, please extract five keywords. And if we then check the answer, it does that perfectly fine. It gives us an answer and it seems it does kind of a markdown trick, making sure that the answer is bolded. And it gives us five keywords, which is great. The thing is with large language models is they always do it in their own formats. Um, we ask it a question, but if we want to ask it a follow-up question, how do we then format the prompt that we have? 
And we're doing that with a very specific prompt template. And let's go through that uh, quickly because we have seen a template like this in previous videos and it's relatively straightforward. If you want to have multiple conversation or at least follow-up questions, you have you need to make sure there is a split between the first conversation and the second conversation so that the large language model understands, okay, we've already talked about this. This was our conversation history, as it were. And then we have a new conversation and I can answer that based on everything we have seen thus far. But even in each conversation, there's a very specific template that we need to use. So. A prompt template in Mistral 7b starts with the S token. And the S token basically indicates, okay, we're starting a conversation. When we're done with the conversation, we do a similar S token to indicate, okay, we're starting now a new conversation. We have finished the user prompt and the model answer, and now we're gonna start again. And then we continue with the second conversation. To indicate your instruction, we have a user prompt with the inst tokens. So that we can separate what I ask with what the model answers. And by using this template, um, it generally also becomes more accurate because it's trained for this specific template, but it also helps us to differentiate multiple conversations. Now, conversational isn't necessarily a big issue with keyword extraction because we're not asking it back and forth about, you know, the keywords. But it does allow us to do something called one-shot learning, where we show the large language model an example of, the, um, of how you should extract keywords, and then it repeats that. So let's start at the beginning of that one-shot learning. We start with an example prompt, a prompt that essentially shows how a conversation should go. So I have the following document which is uh, the website mentions that it only takes a couple of days to deliver. Then I ask it, okay, please give me some keywords. Don't repeat yourself, only give the keywords. And then I'll show the LLM, okay, this is what the keywords should look like, but also this is how they should be represented. So I want comma separated keywords. I want a small space between them. And there are small things, but I want to make sure that this is repeatable. So this is the example prompt that we have. We show the LLM, this is what uh, it should look like. After that, we have our keyword prompt and our keyword prompt essentially is the same thing as we had above, but this time we can plug in any document that we want. And our document then of course are the documents for which we want our keywords to be extracted. And then it's a simple matter of combining those two to create one large prompt that has an example, which is this. And then after that, we have our question, which the model can answer. And because we have this document tag, we can just replace it with whatever document we're interested in. So that's everything we need before we can actually get started with key LLM. And the very first use case is amazingly simple, but it works quite well. We have an input document. Uh, in this case, most micro bats use echolocation to navigate and find food. And then we have the, tom the prompt template that we used before. I have the following document. Uh, based on that information, extract some keywords. And then the LLM, in this case, Missile7b, extracts our keywords. Essentially, all we're doing here is asking the LLM, please extract me some keywords in this specific format. And that uh, sounds quite simple uh, to create an entire extension of Keybird for this, but there are some optimization tricks that we will go into a little bit later. But it already shows you the power of Mistral B. Plus, when those models get faster and smaller, this is a perfectly valid use case. Now, to do this within Keybird, we have an extension that's called Key LLM. And Key LLM can take in a lot of different large language models. Uh, for it to use in the example that we showed before. So running this is really straightforward. We have an LLM, a text generation, which is generally a, an open source variant. The generator that we created previously, which was obviously the Mistral 7b model, 
and the prompt template that we created before, because especially those example prompts help in making sure that the model's accurate. We load in our LLM together in key LLM, and we have our keyword extraction model. To show how this works, we have some documents here. Uh, these two are about receiving some orders, and this is about LLMs. And we can give them to key LLM for it to process. It's nothing more than just running extract keywords on a bunch of documents to make sure they are um, extracted correctly. And after, uh, after loading it through Mistral 7B, it should spit out a number of keywords that we are interested in. The better GPU you have, the faster this process will be. For the first document, the website mentions, it uh, extracts a number of keywords directly from, um, from the text itself. And we can see that sometimes it receives a little bit, uh, extracts a couple of more keywords and sometimes uh, fewer. And because in the example we showed it just a single word, it tends to focus on extracting um, engrams, so single tokens, instead of multiple tokens. It could be package received as a single word in the second document. But that's where prompt engineering comes in. Uh, you can essentially show it a couple of examples of the types of keywords that you're interested in. And that works tremendously well. So this is the very first example that we have. We ask the LLM extract keywords. Or we, can, we can do that a little bit more efficiently if we have thousands of documents. But let's go to efficient keyword extraction. Let's say we have a number of input documents, a couple of thousands. Many times, many of those documents will be very similar to one another. One another. And what we can do is we can run those, we can run key LLM for every single document. But if they're similar to each other, why would we? Why would we run it twice for two documents that are very similar? We could do it only once. What we're doing in efficient key LLM is we're finding clusters of documents where we expect, where we assume documents are highly similar to each other. We need to make sure that those clusters essentially contain almost identical documents. And then from each cluster, we only extract keywords for one of those documents. Because if we do it for only one of those documents, we can simply assign them to all other documents. Because they are, we assume they are nearly identical, they could have the same keywords. So after that, we give the same keywords to all documents in the same cluster. And this speeds up this whole process quite a bit because it can reduce the number of documents, depending on your use case, uh, at least in half. Now to do this with key LLM, what we're doing here is um, let's split this up a little bit so we can see that maybe a little bit more interesting uh, perspective. We start with loading a sentence transformer. So to create those clusters, we're creating embeddings from documents and clustering them. And the clustering process is very similar. It's essentially searching for documents that have high similarity to one another and that's it. We're not interested in cluster structures and density and stuff like that. We're only interested in searching for documents that are very similar to one another. Now, after doing all of this, we have created our embeddings using one of the new, very strong embedding models, and we can throw them into key LLM. What we're doing here is we're giving it documents, but we're also giving it the embeddings to cluster. Most importantly, there's a threshold that we can use. And the threshold essentially um, decides which documents belong together. The lower the threshold, the more documents will be thrown together. The higher the threshold, the fewer documents will be identified as being similar to one another. So the aggregated keywords that we have now show that the first two documents have the exact same keywords. Because they were deemed as being similar to one another, it was only necessary to focus on extracting the keywords for one of them. Because the last document, the third document, was about something entirely different, 
it, it wasn't clustered together and we could see that it created something for that document specifically. This entire process speeds up things quite a bit and also allows for significant flexibility with respect to using key LLM together with embeddings. Now there's a third example that we have. And the third example is combining Keybird with key LLM. And the interesting part here is Keybird already does some keyword extraction and we can use those candidates as well as the embeddings to fine tune the keywords that we have in key LLM. It works as follows. Let's say we have a number of input documents and we give it to Keybird. Now Keybird creates embeddings from those documents and based on embedding techniques, it finds keywords that are most relevant to the input documents. But after Keybird, we've created embeddings. And since efficient key LLM also uses embeddings, why not leverage them together? Why not make this pipeline a little bit more easier and simpler to use? So we're giving key LLM not only the embeddings that were created in Keyword, we're also giving it the keywords that were created. So we can essentially ask key LLM, look, I have a bunch of keywords that are interested, interesting, uh, that were created from Keyword, they're candidates essentially. Please fine tune them, make them a little bit more accurate, make them uh, a little bit more you know, easier to read. So food is kind of a fake keyword. Food finding is a little bit more accurate and you know, it helps me understand a little bit more what the, the keyword, um, the document is about. This process is quite easy and simple to use. What we have is Keyword, where we give the a large language model and an embedding model the same that we used before. It's only three lines of code. We're loading in key LLM, we're loading in Keyword, and we're extracting documents, or at least we're extracting keywords from documents using a predefined threshold. And that's essentially it. Three lines of code to create keywords that are very similar to what we have seen before. We don't have to create the embeddings ourselves. We have just three lines. That's everything that we need to run. And that's essentially it. And it's a very efficient way of loading in your large language model and using it for keyword extraction. And sure, a 7 billion parameter model is still relatively large, but hopefully in the future they become smaller, more accurate, faster, to the point where it makes sense to run this even on millions of documents. The idea with packages like these is that they allow for modularity and modularity makes sure that they are somewhat resistant to changes in the future. Maybe resistant is not, a, not the right word. They're, they're flexible. They can go along with any new releases, changes um, that we find in the field. And I think that modularity aspect is incredibly important in packages such as Keyword or Bird Topic in the NLP or LLM field where things change quite quickly. That was the tutorial for today. Uh, it showed how we could do large language models with Keybird, an automated process that I think works relatively well. But uh, of course, try it out, see how it works. If you have any feedback, let me know. Uh, there's always room for improvement. And as always, uh, if you have joined the video, uh, enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you next time.